We are continuing our series on Is Hell Real? We're gonna be talking about the geographic location of hell. So it's not a state of mind, it's not some mental trap that you yeah. can free yourself from. While you're alive, you have a chance to repent. You have a chance to turn, turn where? Back to God. It's a prison. We're seeing that there are prisoners there that want to be set free, that want to get out, that don't want to be there no more. Hey! Welcome back to Gather Talks. So we are continuing our series on Is Hell Real? If you watch the first series, you will know that hell, not the first series, the first episode, you will know that hell is a real place. So continuing on in this series, and just to let you know what we're gonna cover in the series, we're also gonna be sharing the geographic location of where hell is located. We're gonna be talking about how hell is a prison. prison. And then we're gonna be also looking at, there are characteristics to hell and what people will experience in hell. And so God wants you to know all of these things because there's not really a thorough teaching on hell and there's a lot of questions that people tend to have about it. So this series will be serving as a guide to help answer all those questions. And so with this, this episode in the series, we're gonna be talking about the geographic location of hell. So when you think about the geographic location of hell, it seems like, of course, it's down somewhere. <laughs> because you know, hell's everything is hell's down, having the hell's. But let's look at that in scripture. Let's find scripture to back up what you already think in your head, because that's all that matters is what God says. So exactly. Whatever we think is no. Yeah. So first, going to Isaiah fourteen, verse nine, in the New King James Version, it says, "Hell from beneath." Pause. Obviously. Is excited about you to meet you at your coming it stirs up the dead for you all the chief ones of the earth it raises up from their thrones all the kings of the nations so here we clearly see hell is beneath let's keep going to find out where beneath. yeah so you know, let's have some conversation and look at scripture funny thing I don't know why this is about man. Very funny thing. Whenever someone is about to pray, they say, "Let's look to the Lord." And everybody look down. <laughs> um, yep. This definitely says hell is beneath. So let's not do that. So, to Denise's point, we're we're going to be breaking it down step by step. So we've already established one point of geographical location when we're talking about hell. It is beneath. It's below. So it's not. A state of mind is not some mental trap that you yeah. can free yourself from. Yeah. As some people would teach, if you have a life that's bad on earth, you're in a living hell, that is your hell experience. No, no that's no. none of that is true. No. It is beneath. That's the first one. Now let's go to Second Peter chapter two, verse four, in the New King James Version. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. We're still around that first point yeah. of location. He sent down. them down, down, down somewhere, a physical location. Yes. I, they were in heaven, and then they were sent down. Yes. <laughs> okay. So going to the next scripture, Numbers 16, verses 31 through 34 in the English Standard Version. And as soon as he, Moses, had finished speaking all these words, the ground under them split apart, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their households and all the people who belonged to Korah and all their goods. So they and all that belonged to them went down alive into Sheol, and the earth closed over them, and they perished from the midst of the assembly. And all Israel who were around them fled at their cry, for they said, lest the earth swallow us up. Again, this is saying, Hell is beneath. It is down. The earth opened up, swallowed them whole as they were alive and took them to Sheol. So hell is, again, in scripture, is showing us it is beneath. And it also shows us the second data point. Yes. It's in, in the, the earth. earth. Yes. That's yes. the second data point yes. now that we can reference that. It's not yes. some place in the universe where your mind goes exactly. that you need to free yourself, yes. brothers no. and sisters. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. It is located in the center of the earth. And when you study, researchers have found that the earth's core, which is the center of the earth, is 6,000 degrees Celsius. 
that is very, very, very hot, people. Yep. So that's giving you an indication of the type of heat that these souls are experiencing in the center of the earth, which is where hell is located. So the next scriptures, and there's a couple of scriptures I'm going to go to because I have a support scripture to the one I'm getting ready to read. In Ephesians chapter 4, I'm going to read verse 9 through 10 in the New King James, which says, Now this, he ascended, and he being Christ, what does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might feel all things. If you go back and look at episode one, I read a scripture in Acts where when Christ died, he went immediately to Hades or Sheol or hell. That is what it's talking about in this verse when it says he also first descended into the lower parts of hell. He went uh, into the earth. He went into hell. And we just saw the scripture that hell is located in the lower parts of the earth, in the center of the earth. So a support scripture I'm going to read to that talks about in Matthew 12, verse 40, about Christ's death and burial. It says, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Where was he in the heart of the earth? He was in Sheol. He was in Hades. He was in hell. All those terms mean the exact same thing. Because when you go back, I believe it was Acts chapter 2, verse 27 and verse 31. It said, for you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. For he, it says, he foreseeing this spoke concerning the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. So again, when Jesus Christ died, his soul went to Hades, which that's why the scripture says he descended into the lower parts of the earth, because Hades, which is the same thing as Sheol, which is the same term that talks about hell, is located in the center of the earth. And we just got the third data point in that scripture as well. It said the heart of the earth. What yes. is the heart of the earth? The core yes. of the earth. So now we got the full picture as to where hell is geographically located. It is beneath. It is here in the earth. It is the core, the heart, the center of the earth, yeah. this planet. Yes. So it's not like, oh, if I live in the northern hemisphere, it is beneath, <laughs> so that means I got to go circumvent and get to no. the bottom. No, it is in the, the core center. of the earth. Yes. So we're going to keep reading yep. more scripture that validates it's in the earth and it's down, it's lower. So Isaiah 14, verse 11, in New King James, it reads, Your pomp is brought down to Sheol, and the sound of the string instruments, the maggots is spread under you, and worms cover you. This is a description about Sheol, Hades, hell. And we keep saying all these terms so you can kind of understand the expansive language that's in the Bible, because all these places is the same place. But we see here that it's brought down to Sheol, to hell, to me. So it's, again, beneath, hitting that first data point. So let's go to Ezekiel 32, verses 18, 21, and 24. And the key verses that we want to focus on is 21 and 24. And we're reading in the New King James Version. Son of man, well over the multitude of Egypt, and cast them down to the depths of the earth. Her and the daughters of the famous nation with those who go down to the pit. Verse 21, the strong among the mighty shall speak to him out of the midst of hell with those who help him. They have gone down. They lie with the uncircumcised slain by the sword. Verse 24, there is Elam and all her multitude all around her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, who, ha who have gone down uncircumcised to the lower parts of the earth, who caused their terror in the land of the living. Now they bear their shame with those who go down to the pit. You see in this explanation, 
the direction that they are headed does not change. They all go down to the pit, to the core, to the grave, to hell. And if you remember in episode one, we talked about and um, Trey talked about towards the beginning of that episode, he was breaking down the terms of Sheol, which is the Hebrew for hell, Hades, which is the Greek for hell, and those terms mean the pit. So when we see the pit here, it's talking about hell. Those terms also mean grave, it means hell, all referring to basically hell. If you're in the grave, you're talking about a lot of times you're in hell. Because uh, Old Testament, Again, paradise was down there as well as the torment side. That's where everybody went, Old Testament. Um, but New Testament, we talked about how paradise has been moved up to heaven. But so when you see the term the pit, that's also referring to hell. And so now it's just, we have, I want to take the time to do a, a connection. So we know hell is down. Mm -hmm. You know, it's in the center of the earth and we know it's the heart of the earth. So when we're looking at it's hot, as Tremiko explained, it's hot, there's torment, it's dark, it's no water, as we saw in scripture. All of those things we saw in scripture, it matches up with the core of the of the earth. The earth is how many degrees? 6,000 degrees 6, Celsius. 6,000 degrees Celsius. There's no water down there. I'm 100% I'm, I'm sure there's no water down there. So when you are reading God's word, you need to make it practical because it's not in your head like, oh, well, just because it's the center of the earth, it's like down somewhere. No, like it's, the earth opened up and swallowed people mm -hmm. and they went to hell. Yeah. Like it's that simple. Yeah. It's yeah. that easy. So it's not, let's not be, we're so removed from the idea that, oh, okay, because it's in the earth, it's not really, you know, big. No, it's it's the center of the earth. So you you write about a thousand miles or so away from it. So you have to make sure you're walking right, you're living right. And hell is the absence of God. Just want to bring it back full circle. So in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 14, this verse reads, Therefore, Sheol has enlarged herself and opened its mouth beyond measure. Their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he who is jubilant shall descend into it. So here's the thing about Sheol, hell. It's so many people busting it wide open. Yes. They're like, I gotta open up. I gotta enlarge myself and open my mouth wide to swallow all these souls coming yep. down here. And again, it talks about descending. So just realize there are more people that are rejecting God than they are receiving and following God. Therefore, hell's like, I gotta make myself bigger for y'all. And the reason why hell has to do that is because its design intention was not for man. Mm -hmm. It was designed yep. for the angels. Yep. So it was That's built it. with the correct parameters yep. that they are, it's only okay. supposed to house these angels who decided to disobey God with Lucifer. That's what it was created for. That's what And it, Satan. And Satan. Well, I said Lucifer. Earlier you just said the angels. I, I said angels who left with Lucifer. Oh, okay. That started to <laughs> The first time he did, the second time. Okay, see, the second time he did. It was crafted for that purpose. But now, since man has fallen and people continue to disobey and live lives contrary to the word of God, that function and form has changed. The objective is different. It got to enlarge its territory like the old Israel new priest. <laughs> So let's go to Proverbs chapter 7, verse 27 in the New King James Version. Her house is the way to hell. Now whoever that her is, y'all better be careful of her house. <laughs> Descending to the chambers, inner rooms like cells of death. So this also goes to show that there's some, some complexity in hell. There's some divisions, there's some separation, there's some rooms. This is just further, like that's why I love the word of God because it just further expounds and explains in great detail of how hell is, what it is, where it's located, how it's designed, but somehow people are taking all of this breath of scripture and just, nah, nah. it's not real. Hell's it's a state, state of mind. mind. Right. <laughs> I just don't understand why we won't take the word of God at face value. Exactly. Why, why would he spend all of this time sending all of these prophets to explain to people, turn from sin. 
if hell was not real. Exactly. But since hell is real, y'all better be listening to this gaff talk. <laughs> yeah. Next scripture, Job 17 and 16 in the New King James Version. Will they go down to the gates of Sheol? Shall we have rest together in the dust? Again, doubt. It's not some arbitrary like, oh, it's just a spiritual run. No, like, your soul goes there and it's in the earth, it's down, it is in the core, in the heart of the earth. And so yeah, again, down. And I like the detail like Donovan was saying because now we see we got gates. So now we got an out, outside part. Okay, so with gates on the outside, we got rooms on the inside somewhere, we got Tartar respect, like it's a lot going on yeah, in there. Like yeah. we see the how how complex in the layout now, but you can't yeah. get that if you just read one or two scriptures. Exactly. That's why we're taking you through all the scriptures. Exactly. So in Isaiah 38 and 18, in the New King James, it says, For Sheol cannot thank you. Death cannot praise you. And then you was talking about God. Those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your truth. So Sheol, the pit, same place, terms referring to the same thing, they're interchangeable, and it's located down. And those that are down there, they have no hope in God's word. It's too late, because repentance is for the living in the earth, okay? And Psalms 86, verse 13 reads, For great is your mercy toward me, and you have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. Depths, right? That's deep, that's yeah. down. And just to be clear, when the psalm writer is talking about God's mercy delivering his soul, it's because he repented and turned away. It wasn't just God just gave him a pardon for his sin. It was, he was living in sin, he repented, and God's mercy gave him the time to repent yes. so he would not go to hell. We just want to make sure we're very clear yeah. that nobody gets a exception clause. Like, I get to live my life anyway, and then God's grace and mercy is just going to be like, nah, I'm not going to send you there. And exactly. the important thing of that is he was living in sin. Like, while you're alive, you have a chance to repent. You have a chance to turn. Turn where? Back to God. Yes. It's not just some arbitrary turning away. Like, no, turn to God and walk crazy. Like, while you're living, you got a chance. But after that, well, you in hell. Yeah. So this, like so this next section that we're going to dive in. I'm, I'm going to connect it to real world because that's what we try to do here at Gather. We give you practical things to connect with. So, in this realm, in the earth, as we go to and fro from our day, when you break the law, mm -hmm. what happens to you? You go to jail, prison. You are separated from society. They send you away. Mm -hmm. They lock the door and you don't get to come out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Hell is a prison. Yes. For those who have decided, and we're going to keep saying that so no one get confused that God is just sending people, those who have decided to live contrary to the word of God, go to prison. Yes. Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and we live according to the laws of the kingdom of heaven. And when you decide to break those laws, you go to prison. Exactly. Yeah. All right, let's look at it in the scripture. Isaiah chapter 24. Mm -hmm. Verse 22 in the New King James Version. They will be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. Remember, Jamico said it earlier, mm -hmm. pit, grave, depth, all that's talking about hell. Mm -hmm. And will be shut up in the prison after many days they will be punished. Hell is a prison. It's a prison, y'all. And I wanted to point out that Scripture tells us that sin is lawlessness, which means you are not abiding by the law. So if you are in sin, you are breaking the law, which means you go to prison. Come on now. Connect Bam. It. Yes. That's sin. Um, I'm going to read Proverbs 7.27. We read this one, but we want to point out a different, we want to emphasize a different point here. So in the New Living Version, New Life, New Life Version, her house is the way to hell. Hell going down to the rooms like cells of death. So now because we saw that it was a prison, there's some complexities there. There's rooms there. There's different areas for different people, for different types of people. Because I don't want to be the one to tell you, but there, everybody is going to have a different level of requirements when they get down there based on 
pastors and preachers that told people wrong and led people astray. They got a different level of torment. They got a higher level of torment. So we got different complexities, different areas for different torment. Yeah. Yeah. And what adding to Nina's point, because everybody like I said, you know, your sin is the same as my sin. And all mm -hmm. sin is the same. So mm -hmm. I can you judge me. That is not found in the word of God. Exactly. There are levels to this thing. Absolutely. The overarching sin is lawlessness, is disobedience of God's word. But then there's some nuance, right? There's transgression. There's iniquity. There's some additional nuance mm -hmm. because there's sin that God hates. Mm -hmm. Then there's sin that is an abomination. Mm -hmm. yes. Those are not synonyms. Yes. They do not mean the same right. thing. So to Nina's point, if you live contrary to the word of God, your destination is hell. Yeah. Point blank, period. Exactly. But when you get there, your punishment may be different. We yeah. even saw Christ explain this in the gospel, yep. where he says, he who knew receives more stripes than he who didn't knew. Now, they both got beat, yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. but one got less stripes because they were in ignorance. And all those scriptures would be right across the bottom for you to go check that out. So in Jonah chapter 2, verse 6, keep it in the same vein. Let's look at how hell is a prison. And like she said, there's rooms down there. Rooms meaning like cells. If you go to a jail in anybody's city, you'll see there are separate little rooms. What do they call that? I don't know how what the square footage is that they're in, but they little tiny rooms yep. with a bar uh, closed across it. So let's talk about bars. And, and I'm not talking about rap and dropping bars. I'm talking about <laughs> prison bars. All right. So let's go to Jonah chapter 2, verse 6. In the New King James, it says, I went down to the uh, moorings of the mountains. The earth with its bars closed behind me forever. Yet you have brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. So we saw that hell is located in the center and the core of the earth and how with Korah and his family, the earth opened up, split open, and they dropped straight into Sheol and the earth closed up. Here it's saying the earth with its bars closed behind me forever. Eternity is located in the spirit realm, which is where hell is in the center of the earth. And it refers to his life being brought up from the pit. The pit, which is hell, is a prison. There are bars down there that people are in prison in, as well as many other torments, which we're going to be looking at in a different episode in the series. People have to realize and understand that everything that is in the Word of God is intentional. Yes. It was put there with purpose. All of these very great, detailed, and rich descriptions of hell is to bring it into focus and reality. So people do not make the mistake of thinking, oh, it was just a party. So as you see throughout various forms of entertainment, movies, shows, books, whatever, they make hell to seem like it's just this big sinful party. Yeah. Like you, you living on earth in sin, doing what you want to do, having a bunch of fun. Mm -hmm. Then you go to hell, living, doing what you want to do and having a bunch of fun. <laughs> no. We want to make sure, and God wants to make sure, which is why he wrote with intentionality in scripture to understand that Hell is not a place you want to be. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody goes to jail and is like, oh, this ain't that bad. <laughs> like, when you think about prison, like, just from stories that I've heard from people that have been to jail, it's like, you're not doing anything on your own anymore. Like, somebody else is telling you what to do when you come out of your cage, when you go to eat, when you go out to wreck, when you, like, everything is controlled for you. you you're no longer, like, your own person because somebody else is making you do something else. Like, so that's how it's going to be in hell. You're not going to have a choice like, well, I want to go over to that torture chamber. No, you're about to go to that torture that's chamber exactly. and you go that's sit. Like, that's a really good point. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, so in Zechariah 9 and 11, in the New King James Version, it says, As for you also, because of the blood of your covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit of hell. So we get some more nuance. It's, there's no water there. So it's dry, 
just terrible. It's a pit. We already understand that from all the expansive dictionary lessons we just gave. With Sheol, Hades, pit, grave, all that. So there's no water there. And we'll get into more characteristics of hell in the series, so stay tuned. But, yep, it's a prison. We're seeing that there are prisoners there that want to be set free, that want to get out, that don't want to be there no more. But that's your judgment. That's yeah. what, It's an eternity of being of imprisonment, basically. And just to clarify, with Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11, and other scriptures we've seen in the Old Testament, this is speaking from God's perspective to the children of Israel, what will happen if they turn away from sin. So... Zechariah is not prophesying that the Lord is going to go to hell and free the prisoners that are in hell currently for living contrary to his word. It's talking about the people who are alive and have a chance to repent and turn away from sin. That if they do this, the destination that they were going to, I will save them from that destination. Because I just want to make sure that nobody yeah. walks away from this video thinking like, yeah. well, they just said there was no release from hell, but they read all these Old Testament scriptures that talks about people being released from hell and getting past the bars because it's talking to living people. As Trey said earlier, as long as there is life in your body, you have the opportunity for repentance. Yeah, It's warning you just like you're alive watching this video and God is warning you. There's an opportunity, but once we expire and our souls leave, that's it. So in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 19, in the New King James Version, again, 1 Peter 3, 19, it says, By whom also he, being Christ, went and preached to the spirits, which were the disobedient angels, in prison. He went and preached to the spirits in prison. So again, we looked at how in Acts, the soul of Jesus Christ went down to Sheol, Hades, hell. And while he was down there, there were some things that he was doing. Because he was down there for three days and three nights. One of the things that he went to do was go preach to them disobedient angels who were locked up down there. And it said in prison. So hell is a prison for those who are sentenced there. And then the last scripture we're going to read is 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 in the New King James Version. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. What do you see in prisons? You see chains, yep. handcuffs, yep. locking you up, restricting your movement yes. so you're just not walking around. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hell is a prison for the souls of people who did not live a life according to the word of God. Absolutely. So that is what this episode we're gonna just pause it here but there are so many characteristics about hell and we're gonna get into that in the next episode of what are those characteristics but so far we see that hell is actually real because god talks about it a lot in scripture mm -hmm. then we took a look at where is the geographic location of hell the geographic location of hell it is in the center of the earth it is the earth's core but you can only get there through spiritual means. It is 6,000 degrees Celsius at the core. Come on. So that's flaming hot, burning hot, that them souls are down there screaming in torment because of the heat and flames. And again, don't let nobody fool you. It's a state of mind. No, there are actual flames. There's actual torment, which the next episode is going to get into with that torment. We're going to break all the different torments down that is revealed in scripture of what happens there. But lastly, we see that hell is also a prison. It's a prison for the souls who have rejected God that said, I don't want to follow you. I don't want to do your will. I don't want to receive forgiveness of sins the way you prescribe for sins to be forgiven. Okay then you choose to spend eternity separated from me and a part of that you'll be locked up in hell as a prisoner until it is time for hell to be thrown into the lake of fire and those souls to be thrown into the lake of fire because that is what rejecting god does there's no such thing as annihilationism where you cease to exist we always exist so with that we're going to end this episode we thank you for watching Please subscribe to our channel, especially if you're learning a lot. 
don't just watch the videos and not subscribe. Please <laughs> click the bell and subscribe to our channel. And also share these videos again with other people. You may not know how to properly explain certain things to people. You may have an awareness of it, but can't quite articulate it. Send the video to them. It will explain it. We have all the scriptures in here. So with that said, definitely stay tuned for the next episode to be posted, where we're gonna start to get into all the different characteristics of hell and the ways that people will be tormented down there. So with that, we thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.